Taliban orders government workers do not shave, must have a beard to work. On March 28th, the Taliban ordered government officials in Afghanistan to wear a beard and adhere to Islamic and Afghan dress codes. According to Reuters, members representing the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice were patrolling the entrances of government offices to make sure that employees complied with the new rules. Government employees were also ordered to stop wearing suits and instead wear uh, peran, a loose top and turbans. Bilal Sarv Sarvari, an Afghan journalist, tweeted a photo showing men gathered around the entrance of the foreign ministry office who were not allowed to enter unless they, their looks matched the Taliban's demands. The Taliban also announced that parks would now be segregated by sex and all foreign shows would be banned. This ban includes the blocking of media outlets like the BBC, Voice of America, and DW News. According to the Ministry for the Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice, women will be allowed to visit the park for three days, while men can visit on the remaining four days of the week, which means that even married couples and their families cannot visit the parks together. Okay, so men can't shave their beard, but this is not for all men, right? It's mostly for men that are working with the government for now. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So, I mean, okay, so, and also parks, men and women can't visit together, even if they're married? Yeah, because they're segregated by sex. Okay, and what are you supposed to do if you're a married couple in Afghanistan? I want to go out and have fun. Too bad! <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I guess the Taliban has the Taliban, right? I don't know what to say. This is insane. But it's still, it's as bad as this is, okay? So I don't know if you guys remember, and some of you weren't even born, this is not even close to how bad it was the last time Taliban was in power. But if things going it ke keeps going in the same direction, we might get close to there, right? I mean, this is only the first year. Well, that's what people are talking about. Like, this is a significant step closer to the yeah. previous ultra conservatism because although previously it was all men were not allowed to trim or shave their beards, all men were required to grow beards. Right now, right. it's those who work for the government. So it is definitely a sign towards things growing more ultra conservative. And people are very concerned about that including this announcement of the severe um, segregation on the basis of sex. And then what I found very significant is the blocking of these news outlets like BBC, Voice of America, and DW News, because these are all news stations that are publicly funded by, you know, the British government, American government, and German government. And this is significant because they, um, these news agencies are providing news content in Pashto and in Darcy, you know, to the most important local languages. And so it's news from outside the country that people inside the country can actually understand. And the BBC um, Darcy or Pashto program alone attracts like 6 million listeners very frequently. I, I can't remember if it was on a daily basis or a weekly basis, whatever. But, it, it, you know, this is a very important source of information for this population. And now they're going to be cut off from that. So informational control is a very important part of, um, you know, establishing and maintaining authoritarianism. Okay. So, by the way, um, okay, so Susanna, what would you do if you were the Taliban, okay? And you were like the part of Taliban that is now has is responsible for these decision makings on coming up with rules for Afghani people. OK, and you have to decide between because the Taliban is not just a unanimous voice. Right. For people who follow us, they know this. Right. There's many different fractions in the Taliban and they don't always agree with each other. Uh, but there's a whole, whole bunch of your members who died and bled for this eventual victory. Um, and they thought that they're going to bring, they, they sacrificed their lives because of, for the sake of an Islamic regime. Okay. And they're pretty upset that you 
the the leaders of Taliban are now talking to like having deals and negotiating with Americans, just like the previous regime, and they're talking about schools being open for girls, and you know they're like, what is like beard? Like they don't like they think the restrictions don't go far enough. They don't they hate the idea that like you're saying beard for just government employees like. We're supposed to have Sharia law. This should be for everybody. What do you mean for just for government employees, right? And they have like, burqa is not enforced right now on everybody. Um, it's still in Afghanistan, right? Um, and I don't know, some Talibani members are saying, oh, we're protecting Shias. We like, you know, we are, we defend Shias rights and stuff. And they like, what the hell? What are you talking about defending Shia rights? Shias, they say the Shias, they, these Taliban members would say Shias are our enemies, right? So you have this internal members and a whole bunch of powerful voices from within which is the greatest threat to your exit to Taliban's existence right because as much as people think maybe the americans are a threat to um, taliban or maybe other enemies maybe i don't know some uh, other insurgency groups within afghanistan that are anti-taliban might be a threat none of this is a threat to taliban as much as taliban members itself that might be upset with the taliban membership and not being islamic enough right so you're looking at that and you also know that you don't have money, people are starving, and if you don't somehow get recognized by the international community and start doing trade and money and your money doesn't start flowing in, the the amount of star you know poverty and starvation will make people upset enough that they might actually start like rising up against you. And like at this end of the day, this is not gonna be a victory. If, if the whole world can see that you're not, that Afghanistan is ruined because of the Taliban coming to power, right? So you want to also not make the rules strict enough. You want to have, you want to make the rules strict so you don't have internal Taliban, like your own Taliban members be upset with you. But you also have to, you also ha you, you have the international community demanding that you respect women rights, that you don't make the rules too strict or else they're not going to trade with you or recognize you. Even, you know, even some of your allies are saying, talking like that. Right. So what would you do? Like how, if you, if your main goal is survival, what, what, what would you do? Like. Hmm. Yeah, you have to walk a very fine line, very fine line. And you have to, you have like those two major camps that you have to capitulate towards, but they're diametrically opposed. So it's very difficult. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, I, I just want people to understand that this is not that simple. Okay. I mean, morally, it's obviously horribly horrible, right? What they're doing. Um, but strategically, uh, politically, it's it's Taliban is like they they might themselves I mean, they might see themselves being stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Anyways, I just want to mention that. Um, so I also want to do read some start comments, and then we could go to the next news. Unless you want to add anything. Um. No, 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 that was all. Let's go to the comments. Okay. So Eric is saying, guys, why aren't you using the current flag of Afghanistan? Why the old flag of Afghanistan? I mean, the, the new flag of Afghanistan is like the flag of Taliban. And I think like maybe, I don't know, I'd rather, rather be sympathetic to the Afghani people who might not want us to recognize uh, Afghanistan with the flag that represents the Taliban. I mean, I, I prefer, I would prefer using the flag that Afghani people would might feel like it represents them more rather than, you know, just the Taliban part of Afghanistan. So I think that it's well, fair and for also us to use the old the, flag. the Afghani flag is more recognizable to most people than the Taliban's flag. So it has to do with just like, you know, popular recognition as well. Like how I still yeah. call Facebook Facebook, even though it, the parent company changed its name to Meta. Like it doesn't have that recognition yet. Yeah. People are saying, did I just say stuck between Iraq and a hard place? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, dad. Um, all right. So next, Bobo. Bobo is here. Hi, Bobo. Hi, Bobo. Bobo is, 
saying how will Bobo okay go i to- had the same question i had the hmm. same question bobo bobo is asking how will women go to the parks if they can't leave the house alone without mehram meaning like a uh male family member as a chaperone that's, um is mehram still a thing there no that's saudi arabia i mean i mean maybe it was saudi arabia i don't know if they changed no, there's lots of conditions in afghanistan where women have to have mehram or not right now i thought yeah. that was not like today? for traveling long distances oh yeah for traveling long distance they need that right now not for going to the not for going outside maybe they change that later i don't know but right now I mean, if you're just walking within your own city, they don't have that rule. It also probably depends on the area. You know, there might be like unofficial rules or things th- that some random Taliban Talibanis. I think right force. now you need a mahram if you're traveling. Yeah. Not if you're going from your house to the park. Well. Oh. Oh. Um. Okay. Here's another question. With so Farmer many. Stormy okay. is saying. With so many beards floating around, I suppose lice treatment will part be part of their health employment or their employment health insurance. Do people get lice in their beards? Um, why not? It's a it's oh my hairy. gosh! I've never had <laughs> facial hair, so I've never thought about this. Oh my god, that'd be <laughs> terrible! Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> Can you imagine? Yes. So Bengali Bengali this- was saying. So mother yeah, and son are not allowed. It probably depends on the age of the child. Yeah, you're right. I think like on Women's Day, if the if the boy is a child, he, the boy can go with the parent, with the mom. I think so. Yeah, you're right. I think the boy you needs know to at be what under. Age that changes? Does it change when the boy reaches the age of reason? Or okay, so if it's in Iran, if the boy is under fifteen, okay, that's the rule. But the Taliban, they check if you have pubic hair. Are you serious? I mean, that's what they did when they slaughtered a whole bunch of people. They had oh to decide God. whether okay, because based on the hadith, if you have like so in Iran, they they cut the rules they specifically based on your 15th birthday, you become an adult. But the the way that Taliban did it last time, they based it based they went based on the Islamic hadith, and the, in the Islamic hadith, when when Mah- Prophet Muhammad's uh, people when they were killing a whole bunch of, um. I don't want to say it because YouTube might think like I'm saying it. People of a, a, a Abrahamic sect that are not Christian or Islam, Muslim, <laughs> okay, when they were slaughtering them, they were checking whether to kill the men. Okay, so all the women were being um, sold as slaves, but the men, if they were boy, if they were kids, they were being sold as slave, and if they were adults, they were being beheaded. Right, so. The way to check for that is that they would just check if they have pubic hair, right? Which is basically based based on that sound, or some twelve-year-olds, um, you know, could be considered adults and were killed because they're adult. If you have it, you know, so that's horrible. This is Islam, I guess, right? That's how Islamic standards work. But you know, Talk Taliban is self-report. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, technically they are being very accurate based on if if you want to make it based on Islamic scripture, um, the Taliban is being very accurate. Okay, you know, more accurate than Iran's government. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Fatima is asking, will they check even for a fake beard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine if they say, okay, that's fine, that's allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what are you gonna do if you can't grow a beard? There are lots of men who can't that, grow beards. That's a yeah. Uh, th- obviously, they would say that's fine. Just like Hashemi Rafsanjani, like that's, that's okay. So, like the mullahs in Iran, they all have beard, right? Why do you mm-hmm. think Hashemi Rafsanjani um, never never had a beard? No, because, uh, presumably because he wasn't able to grow one. Yeah, they call him a shark because of it. Kuse, Wait, what? Um, yeah, Kuse in Farsi. Yeah, the the people people who can grow a beard, they call them a shark in Iran. And <laughs> Wait, here, look, why? Look, hey, look. This is the only Iranian mullah who you never saw having a beard because he can't grow. He's got one. a little bit of stubble. Yeah, but that's the He's only. Got like a that's, goatee. 
Yeah, but every other mullah you see in Iran, like, do yeah. people not wonder how is this? How could this man look like this? Like, every other mullah has a beard, right? So, do people Wait, not wonder? I what need you to back up and explain why it's called a shark. <laughs> because sharks don't have hair, I think. I think that's. Huh. What I don't know. What, I don't think why that's. The, yeah. Oh, we got a super chat. Let me just highlight the super chat. Thank oh, you, Gaijin American. Oh, interesting. Thank you for the two dollars super chat, Gaijin American. Gaijin American is asking, will they, meaning the Taliban, import CCC, CCP purge slash surveillance methods? I don't think they can afford it. I mean, if they can buy, I mean, if you could buy the equipment, right now they don't even have enough money for food. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know if they can afford that stuff. I think Iran well, I mean, would be I more interested. Think they have the infrastructure to support it, yeah, like something exactly. like only eleven percent of Afghanistan has access to the internet, anyways. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Why? How would they do that? Like, I think a better customer for CCP purge surveillance methods and equipment would be the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mm, definitely. Um. Yeah. Oh, this is a good question from D because I had the same question. D is asking: Atheist Republic was a beard ever commanded in Scripture or the Hadith? Like, where does this this commandment towards a beard come from? I know it's partially an emulation of the Prophet Muhammad. Um. Okay. So, I don't remember if there's a specific commandment telling people that they need to put beards, but. I don't remember, but I know even if there isn't one, technically it's Sunnah because you have Muhammad, what Muhammad did, everything he did is considered to be the right way to do things, right? You have to supposed to follow Muhammad as a role model, right? And he had a beard, <laughs> right? So, so that's, I think that's good enough. <laughs> if Muhammad had a beard, you should have a beard. Um, but I don't remember if there's a specific instruction telling people to have beards. I just know that even without it, do you just look at what Muhammad did as a role model. That's why some people put red color red um, in their beard because there's one, at least one hadith where Muhammad did that to make themselves look pretty. You know, they just put red, red, red coloring in their beard. Have you seen that? He put Hold red on. dye in his beard to make himself look red. pretty. I think they used maybe henna. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, something like that. Um, I don't. Okay, like this. Hold on. Look how pretty that looks. Like that. Yeah, this is, is a lot of people Absolutely. find this the right way. To, this they do this because there's like I think there's a hadith that Muhammad did this. So and like, I what, know that's why they keep the beard but trim the mustache because that's what Muhammad did. Yeah. So, I mean, it does look good, to be honest. <laughs> it's so bright. It's yeah, so yeah, yeah. bright. <laughs> yeah, some people want to, you know, the closer you are to Muhammad, the better, apparently, right? So that's why some people do this. Well, that's also <laughs> why people take child brides, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um. <laughs> Do people like? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> guys, I'm not complaining. It looks good. I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, um, let's start coming. Oh, uh, yeah. Stormy was saying news outlets should just launch shortwave radio service. Good luck blocking that. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about how these news blocks on DW, BBC, and Voice of America might kind of give a resurgence to this method of um, spreading the news, which would be very interesting. Um, I think people don't talk about informational control as much as they should because it's one of the most um, important ways in like brainwashing a population. It's just denying them access to any critical information. Okay, there are some funny comments in the live chat. I don't think I could read all of them because of YouTube restrictions and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, should we? Yeah, we are reading the FB chat. 
Okay, Joe is saying, are you guys reading the FB chat? Yes, we are, but we can't highlight every other comment, especially because of your last comment had something in it that I can't hi even highlight because YouTube might find it offensive. I am reading the Facebook chat, but don't expect me to read uh, everything. Okay, here, because you're crying, I'm going to highlight your comment saying, no, no, red beard is the best. Okay, here. Are you happy it's now? A beast. I highlight oh, it's beast? Okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.